Hi, everybody. It's Michelle Hill, your legacy builder with Winning Proof. And I am here for another episode of Winning Proof Unscripted. And today I have a very special guest, Ira Childress. And I have known Ira for a while on LinkedIn. And um, I'm going to read his bio before we go any further. You know, I like to do that. So let me just dive into his bio and then we'll just jump in. Ira Childress is a two-time graduate of Fair State University, earning his bachelor's degree in applied speech communication and his master's degree in education. After graduation, he began his career as an administrator in the alumni relations and advancement office at Ferris State, earning three promotions in five years before advancing to the NCAA national office. As an assistant director of leadership development at NCAA, at the NCAA, his work provided innovative programming that helped positively impact hundreds of NCAA coaches, administrators, and student athletes. He then went on to serve as the athletic director at Okamos, Okamos High School. See, <laughs> I knew I was going to get that one. Okamos High School in Okamos. Michigan for six years. He currently serves as the athletic director at Gulliver Prep in Miami, Florida, where he utilizes his creativity and vision to provide innovative solutions and experiences for Gulliver student athletes, coaches, and the community. In 2019 and 2020, Ira was named a finalist for Varsity Brands National High School Athletic Director of the Year. He's also the best-selling author of the book, Beating the Odds from Poverty to po Prominence, and recently released his second book, Dreams to Reality, the seven-step process to unlock the college athletic recruiting process. Hi, Ira, how are you? Hey, Michelle, how are you? I'm just, uh, I'm excited to be here. Um, you do an outstanding job with this uh, podcast, webcast. And I'm um, looking forward to it. Me too. And I have to tell everybody, yeah, just like I said at the beginning, you know, I and I have never met, of course, this is social media stuff. So we, I don't even know if we've ever talked on the phone. Pre I maybe, so. I, mean, I don't, I don't think so either, but we've communicated on LinkedIn. And so that's where, um, that's where we've known each other. And, and Ira is not my client. Just so everybody knows his books, you know, he's published his book. So just in case people are wondering. So Ira, I want to start with all of those athletic director positions. What do you see is the greatest challenge the NCAA is facing today? Well, I think there's two things, actually three things. One, I believe that, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing, unbelievable challenge when you um, look at the power five football programs and you know, in a direction they really want to go. Um, and then the rest of the group of five and that direction, I'm just wondering if the NCAA is going to have to make a split there, maybe make a group of five playoffs because it's tough for the group of five to get into the, get into the final four, you know, that's been seen over the years. So is it, are they looking at a split there? So I think that's one, one issue. Obviously, number two is name, image, and likeness. I mean, that hasn't happened yet, but it's coming down the pike. NCAA is already talking about name, image, and likeness and what's going to happen when student athletes can earn money based upon their name, image, and likeness. And, and that's, a, to me, a good thing. But I know the NCAA is grappling with how do you manage it all, how do you handle it all, and keep it, keep your, and still keep your amateur status. So, so that's, that's, that's number two. And then number three, I think is, you know, the whole, um, you know, diversity from a, from a coaching standpoint in college football, um, the lack of, you know, um, coaches of color at the power five SBS level. I know that's a, that's been a major issue um, when you have over half of your student athletes that are black, but then you don't have um, a number of uh, coaches um, that are uh, coaches of color, uh, head, head football coaches to be specific. So, so I think those are three things that jump off the page um, that are that are challenges right now at the NCAA level. Yeah, absolutely, and I and there is the disparity is uh, again in the NFL as well. 
it, right. it's you, the, you know, the predominant number of players are black and the predominant number of coaches are white. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to see that gap, you know, shorten um, as the years go by. And I know it's a, it's a hard road to, to tread. Yeah, it's really hard for, for a couple of reasons. Um, if you look at the NFL, um, the NFL is tough because owners and, you know, usually hire GMs that they're comfortable with. And then sometimes that doesn't trickle, trickle down to getting coaches and getting opportunities. Um, I know the NFL has incentivized that with the Rooney rule, and that's really helped some minorities coaches get opportunities, um, but it's still not where it should be. And college athletics is even worse and from a power five standpoint. Um, you know, I believe it's under 10 now, um, the coaches of color um, at the NCAA level. So that's that that's a struggle. And then, in, you know, in all the uh, programs that you have is really hard because um, coaches aren't aren't in the pipeline. They're not getting those opportunities to be coordinators, offensive, defensive coordinators or associate head coaches, which is the natural progression to go on and be a head coach. Um, you know, when I worked at the NCAA, I worked with um, the champions program there and the college uh, minority coaches programs at the NCAA. And we were working with coaches to get in the pipeline and some coaches got opportunities. I had a chance to work with um, James Franklin and David Shaw at Stanford and Franklin at Penn State. And um, Kevin Sumlin was a part of our programs. And, and, you know, we had a, we had a deep list of coaches who were part of those programs. Um, you know, they went on to, that went on to um, Jay Norvell, who's at Nevada now, that went on to success. But um, I believe the NCAA needs to ratchet that up even more and really help these coaches get opportunities. Yes, absolutely. I 100% agree. And, you know, I, I'd like to see the progression of that happen too. Now, as the years have gone by and you're, you're really young, to, to me, you're really young. <laughs> so, um, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Would do you see any difference in the students when you first started and the the attitudes of students now, the makeup of students? Have you noticed any difference or are they all the same from when you started your career to now? You know, I think the biggest difference is two things. One, I think it's social media. Everything now is is done on social media, which I you know I'm a big fan of social media, but in the same time it can be you know, a double-edged sword as well. I mean, if you, you know, look at it and, and you, everything you're doing um, is for likes and clicks and stuff like that, that makes it tough. You know, it puts a lot of pressure on student athletes to excel and do well. Because you have some people out there who are not good to student athletes on social media if they don't do well. So it's, it, it's changed the game. It's been a game changer in a positive way and also in a negative way. So I think that's a big difference between now and, and back when we were coming up. I think the other, I think the other thing is is different is, you know, they, people always say student athletes are, are changed. I think adults have changed too. You know, sometimes you know we have to look at the standards that we have and the standards that we're setting for student athletes and how are they going to operate within those parameters. And you know, and that that goes from from the parent situation all the way to the administrators, to coaches, and every everything in between. So I think adults have have, have changed a little bit. Society's changed. A little bit. Um, so I don't know that student athletes have changed. I think by and large, student athletes still want to be really good at their sport. They really want to work hard and they really want to um, have their sport be a vehicle to take them somewhere. Um, you know, a lot of times either from a leadership standpoint or either from a college standpoint or something. But but I don't think they that student athletes have changed all that much. OK, that's a that's a great answer. And it kind of segues into my next question, which is, um, do you see, I know the NFL and college football have changed the rules through the years of when a student can declare for the NFL. You have to play in college a certain amount of time. Can you kind of speak to that and tell an, the advantage or disadvantage of both sides? Yeah, um, we'll start with um, the NBA. The NBA uh, has a one and done rule which essentially means you need to go one year of college or one year out of high school before you can declare for the NBA draft. Um, they're talking about changing that coming up in 2022 to saying high school student athletes can go into the draft. 
That was the case a few years ago. Obviously, you had a lot of legendary players, not a lot, but a handful of legendary players who went right from high school to the NBA and were successful. I mean, that goes all the way back to Moses Malone was one of the first to do it. Um, then, then you look at uh, student athletes or student athletes like Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett. Um, then, and then you move fast forward, and and obviously they're probably the most famous and in, in, in the best uh, basketball student athlete to do that was LeBron James, of course, who went right from um, Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary's, uh, to the Cleveland Cavaliers. So um, in 2003. So, um, but now they, they, it's a one a one year in college rule. So looking at the NBA is looking to potentially change that in 2022. Um, and the NFL has been this way for, for quite some time. It's three years. You must go three years uh, of college. And that rule hasn't really been challenged because physically uh, student athletes aren't ready to make that jump from high school to the NFL. I mean, from a physical standpoint, that would be a huge, huge jump. So, so I think um, that rule is, is safe for, for, for a long time. And I think it's the right one. Um, you know, in other sports, you know, um, are, are different, but, but those are the rules for, 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 for basketball in, in football. I would like to see basketball open it up to letting high schools go, go if they're ready. And then maybe if you're not, if you don't go, then you have to stay a couple of years, you know? So I, that, I think that could be a happy medium for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. It, it could. And I know, you know, the NBA has changed that rule, you know, here and there. And, uh, you know, the NFL has pretty much stayed steady, steady on that. But yeah, you're right. It's a much more physical game. And please let these guys <laughs> develop, you know, because right. you're going up against, you know, 300 pound linebackers and right. you got to be ready for that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you've had a really beautiful career as, you know, a, assistant uh, director of leadership and athletic director and where you're your athletic director now at Gulliver Prep. What is the most important thing you've learned about yourself through your journey? Yeah, I just understood early on who, who I was and what I wanted to do. And I think that's so important for young people, you know, and it doesn't come, some people, it comes naturally for me, it came naturally, but sometimes you have to really think about it and work at it. But once I knew I wanted to work in sports, I was willing to do what it took to, to, to carve out a path to do that. And what I learned about myself was um, I'm true to myself. I'm relentless at my craft. I'm a, I'm a hard worker and, and I'm passionate about what I do. And I focus on the things that I do well instead of things that I don't do well. And I think that can be a big thing. A lot of times when we're younger, we're trying to say, and they teach us, hey, do everything, be great at everything, you know, be well-rounded. And that that's there's a place for that. But I, but I tell students that just the opposite. I say, hey, take what you do and be great at something. Because if you're great at something, then that can help you propel your career to the next level versus I would rather have somebody that's great at something than somebody that's just okay at everything. You know, so find your niche, find that path that's for you and really um, accentuate that and really uh, go after it, you know, and that's what I try to do. And, you know, throughout my career, it wasn't that I was um, you know, maybe I wasn't always as smart as didn't have always have all the greatest resources the things that I had, I was I had hustle. I'd work hard. Um, I knew I was going to be creative and, and do things di in different ways that weren't being done before. And then the final thing, I, I would always play to my strengths. And uh, I would always do what I knew I could do really well and, and take that and run with it. And that's really been successful for me. So those are kind of the things that I try to uh, share when I'm, when I'm talking to young people who are coming up in the industry. Yeah, that is... Awesome. Because some, like you said before, like they'll, players will just, you know, be, be half-hearted at everything or do everything kind of half-hearted or just do everything. And it's kind of reminds me of that saying, um, uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. You right. know, it kind of, it kind of reminds me of that because like the old, you know, on old resumes, they used to say, you have to say multitasker. I'm a multitasker. That was really important. And nowadays, kind of like the new thinking is, no, just work on one thing. You're not going to be good at multitasking. You know, you might have five things going on at once, but concentrate on that one thing and do that one thing the best you can do. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I want to kind of segue into your books because I have your, your first book, um, um, beating the odds from poverty to poverty to, to prominence i'm sorry and i have it in my amazon wish list it's like in there in the segue ready to go to the cart because i have pages and pages and pages of books that that i want to read tell me i'm so excited when that came out and just tell me a little bit about what that book is about give us a, a good synopsis you know and uh urge people to buy it yeah i mean it's on amazon and you, you just gave the title so that that was great um if, if you want to be uh inspired and if you want to get uh get some tools to to be successful in whatever field you're looking at um i mean this is probably the book for you i did this book as a as a personal thing of mine because i, I wanted to help people i wanted to help young people I wanted to help older people um, that, that came from a situation like I came from, which was, which was tough. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the poorest county in the state of Michigan and, you know, it was in public housing and it, it was very, very difficult, but I knew, um, it, you know, my mom stressed education and I always knew that I wanted something greater. So I dreamed outside of my surroundings often. And even though I was in that situation, I always said, hey, you know what? One day I'm not going to be in this situation. One day I'm going to be in a, in a different situation. And I kept working hard and, and putting in the work to, to get there. So the book kind of outlines that and it talks about, you know, how to make it out, you know, and, and how to battle, you know, and, and different techniques that I use to do that and the perseverance to, that it takes. And, you know, you know all of those things are are in, in the book, the work ethic, the, the, the time management. Um, you know, it, it's a, it's a it's a short book, but there's a lot of packed information in there um, that that can really help people. You know, take their careers to the next level. And that was the one thing I, I wanted to do. You know, with this book, and I wanted to show people that you know this there is a road, there is a path. You know, if you're sitting there, if you're a kid or a young person in that situation right now, and you're, you're saying, man, there has to be more to life than this. There is. There's just a lot of hard work, um, some patience, you know, maybe a little luck along the way, um, but you can get there, you know, and, and I want to inspire people out there to know that, hey, you can get there. And if you look at the book on Amazon, the reviews are, you know, really have been really strong, thankfully, and people have really been inspired by this book. And, you know, it was, it was, like I said, a labor of love of mine because I wanted to let people know that, you know, just because, you know, you, you're in a tough situation and you grew up in this situation that, that you can, you can get to that, that prominence and, you know, and that, that prominence doesn't have to be money or finances, but it can mean, you know, um, just, just feeling like you accomplished, you accomplished the goals that you wanted to accomplish in life, or you accomplished some of the goals that you wanted to accomplish in life. And, 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 you know, a lot of times, you know, you know, the, the pick yourself up by the bootstrap crowd, um, they, they don't understand the, the struggle and, the, you know, and the perseverance that, that it takes to get out. You know, it's easy to say that when you're on the other side of the fence, <laughs> but when you're on the side of the fence that I was on, um, it's roadblocks in every every corner. You're fighting the roadblocks. You have demons. You're fighting. There's a lot of things that keep you there. You know, so you it's so it's it's it's, it's an extra uh, boost that you need uh, to to help get out. You know, and it's not easy, but it can be done. And so that's what the book was, and it was fun to to get it done, and 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 hopefully it's, it really touched a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I was so excited when it first came out. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm excited how you've marketed it. You've done a beautiful job of marketing it. And, you know, I would notice stuff like that because that's what I do too. Yeah. You know, I don't do the marketing myself, but, you know, you did a really good job with that. And, uh, you know, I think it would give you, you know, give readers hope to, to, know that they can make it out. This is not your destiny. This is not who you are. 
Exactly. And you know, the one thing I one tip out there, people are writing books is, you know, obviously they should go to you, your, your, your guru when it comes to writing books, Michelle, you're awesome. And you gave me a lot of help, even though you weren't my, I wasn't your client, you were, you were always very gracious and, and very helpful. And I appreciate that. So thank you. Um, but the one thing I would say is when you're writing a book, the one thing you don't want to do is you want to spend a lot of time writing this book and it's great. And then all of a sudden it sits on the shelf and nobody buys it. So you really, really need to put as much injury or even more injury into marketing, you know, and that that's what I did. And I had a plan I had media behind it and all those things. And that helps because um, if you don't market it well, then it was, you know, it was good, but, but it, it won't reach the potential that it could. Yes, absolutely. And um, I was going to say something to that as far as, um, but I, I don't remember what I was going to ask you. So we'll just pass on by, but <laughs> it'll come back to me maybe. But I wanted to ask you when you were growing up and, you know, you saw yourself doing other, other things, getting out of the projects and all that, did you have heroes? Did you have mentors along the way? Anybody famous or around you that you looked up to that provided guidance or was it all self-driven? Yeah, no, no, I, I didn't have any famous heroes um, in terms of that nature, but I did have my mom, who's a superhero. And so I always say that, I mean, she did everything. She kept the dream alive. She, she kept the, the, the pilot lit. And, you know, even though it was a struggle, um, she was very, very uh, instrumental in everything. And I mean, she really, really kept um, our family going. And, and uh, so I give her a lot of the credit. She always preached education. She told me, hey, listen, you have a lot of talent in athletics, which is great. And I went on to get an athletic scholarship and play college football and all that was great. But she said, listen, one day, no matter how good you are, the ball is going to stop bouncing. And you're going to have to use your education to get where you want to go. And, and I always thought I was going to go to the NFL. And I, I'll tell you a quick story here. You'll get a kick out of this. So, um, in, you know, I started working for the NCAA in 2008. Well, in 2009, um, I became a liaison um, with the NFL while I was working at the NCAA with the programming that we were doing with the NCAA. Uh, with the NFL, we were doing coaches programming and things of that nature. And I was working on those programming. Um, so I started working with the NFL. Well, uh, one, one of the times we were doing these programs, we needed to, to meet with the NFL, you know, um, and their staff and, 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 and come up with a, in a meeting. And so um, I, um, the, 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 the task was then we're going to, you know, fly to New York and, and meet with the NFL. So I remember flying into JFK and and then we had a you know car you know whisk, uh, whisk us away right down to um, Park Avenue at the time. It was at 280 Park Avenue was the NFL headquarters at that time. And I remember just you know going there and and walking up the steps and being like, wow, this is the NFL headquarters. And and in there was Roger Goodell and and Troy Vincent and all the all the great people who are working in the NFL and. And, and, you know, I was, I went by the uh, front desk there and, and right before I um, went into a meeting, I ducked into the bathroom and I got on my cell phone and I called my mom and on the phone and I said, mom, she said, ah, is everything okay? I said, yeah, everything is okay. I just, I just wanted to tell you, um, I lived my dream. She said, what, what? She said, I, I said, mom, I made it to the NFL. And um, she, I said, I'm here working today um, with them on some programming. And we talked and she cried. And it was a great story. But um, just, just go to show all the people out there and all the young people that are listening to this, that your dream may come in a different form. You know, I always wanted to play in the NFL, but I made it there through work, you know, through working in sports. And so, so your dream may not come the way you want it to come, but it may come in a different form. So the, so the more to that story is never give up on your dream because you never know. That is absolutely right. Yes, yes. I could have quit many times, many times in temptation. Like this is too hard. I just want to go get a, a job and work Monday through Friday. That's the hard path right? <laughs> because right. you're somebody else's, you know, uh, employee. They tell right. you when to go to lunch, when to come back from lunch, when you can go, when you can go on vacations. And, you know, if just like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. And I remembered what I was going to ask you about your book is that, is it um, an, e um, an audio book? 
or is it paper? No, you know what? I, I should have did that, but it's not an audio book. Um, um, maybe the next time when I do my third book, I, I'll put it on a uh, audio book. I'm already thinking about book number three. What am I going to do next? But people are already asking me, hey, was, I'm like, I just finished book two. So, uh, but, but, but no, I, I'm enjoying it. But, but yeah, that, that's a good, but it's not on audio, but um, that's a good, something great for the future. Yeah, absolutely. And you can do it actually for free on Amazon's ACX oh, wow. know, platform. So, you know, you have a nice clear voice. You can just listen to other audiobooks, see how they do it. And that's a little tip for everybody. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of, you have to put a lot of sweat equity into it, but you could produce it you know, on your own and upload it onto the audio platform. So it's, I, I will look forward to that too. But I like having a book. You can see from my background, this isn't like a virtual background. These are like real books. Nice, nice. <laughs> so um, yeah, I like still like having a book in my hand, but some of the younger kids nowadays, they're more likely maybe if they can listen to it on whatever spotify or audible right. or whatever they're more likely to get your information so i you know having those multiple ways is good it helps yeah definitely. yeah yeah tell me about your second book that's that's second, brand new yeah the second book was more um of a of a need that i felt that was needed out there. I get asked a lot, you know, a lot of questions about the college recruiting process because that's that's you know a lot of student athletes in high school um, they want to go on and play college athletics, and it's a, it's it's, an, it's it's there's a science to it. In the book, I kind of outline the science to getting on the radar, connecting with college coaches, you know, what email template to use, how to really. Um, get their attention, you know, once you get their attention, what, what questions to ask, what you should look for in a college visit, when you go on a visit, what questions should you ask, you know, um, you know, what are some of the things you should look for when you, when you visit a college, you know, um, like, you know, what does their roster look like? How do you evaluate a roster? I mean, I just went in depth into a lot of different areas of the whole recruiting process from A to Z, we walk you through it. And, and those are questions often asked because a lot of families um, don't know where to start. Um, and a lot of coaches don't understand it really. They're focused on the high school, but they're not necessarily focused on the next level. So I kept getting questions about that. So I want to put something out there for the masses of really understanding the college recruiting process. Yeah. And I think it's really needed because you do have parents who are navigating this process for the first time and just knowing what not to fall for sometimes, you know, right. because there's a lot of people out there that would love to, you know, snatch your child and put them in their uh, system, which maybe isn't the right system for them. So I, I really, this is much needed, much yeah, needed. Thank you. thank you. Yes. So tell me what does the future hold for you? <laughs> you know what? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, I like what I'm doing. I, mean, I like working in sports. You know, we'll see what the what the future holds. I know I'm just going to keep my head down and working hard. You know, I learned long learned a long time ago. Just keep your head down and keep working hard. You know, and and in your future, your dreams will come true. Uh, in the future, you know, and my biggest thing is I like to stay connected. I like to build authentic relationships with people, kind of like yourself. Um, where it's not based upon anything, but hey, you know what? This is a this is authentic relationship, you know. And um, I, you know, I feel like I have a good gift to connect with people and and really utilize my communication, interpersonal communication skills, public speaking skills. I do a lot of speaking around the country. I enjoy that. Um, I enjoy helping people, you know. So who knows what the future is going to hold? But I know I'm enjoying it right now and just enjoying the process and enjoying life, if if that makes sense. It makes absolute sense because I'm doing the same thing, not in, you know, in a different capacity, but it's really fulfilling to be doing what you love to do and doing it every day. It's not, you know, daisies and roses aren't all around every single day. You do still have tough days, but you're paving your own path. You know, right. it's, it, yeah. yeah, it might be the yellow brick road, but you're laying the bricks for where <laughs> right. it's going. <laughs> right, right. And you know, I, I encourage everyone out there to do that. I mean, just you ask yourself this question, am I, am I 
living in my purpose. You know, um, that I think that's very important. And if you're living in your purpose, then great. But if not, then maybe you want to look at getting to the area where you can live in your purpose, because that that's so important because you want to wake up every, every day feeling like you're doing something um, that's that's meaningful, that's meaningful to you, that's impactful to you, and that you're truly living in that purpose. Yes, yes. And I have two more questions for you. Really super easy ones, because... <laughs> Uh, one is what's one thing I know we you talked about your book and talked about you know you want to help young kids realize that they can get out of of uh, economically depressed situations maybe inner city situations what one thing would you tell a young person right now if you were talking to them uh, what would you tell them how to do that what what is the next step be passionate and have a dream. So that's two things. So I cheated, but but be passionate and have a dream because if you're passionate, that passion helped me um, get out of the situation that I was in. That passion helped me make it from the poorest county in the state of Michigan um, all the way here to Miami. Um, that 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 dream that I had, I was always chasing that dream. Of, of playing in the NFL, but even though I didn't do that, I, I, I still got there a different way. So, so be passionate and have a dream. I think those things, they sound very simple, but you know, there's a lot of things that can derail you. So just stay, stay focused on, on that passion and that dream. I love that. I hope somebody is listening that really that will just zero in and you know, give them hope that yes, this is not my excuse. It's my road. Right. You know, so my final question for you is what's your pick for the Super Bowl? You know, um, everybody, I know everybody's picking Kansas City, but um, b being from the state of Michigan, um, Tom Brady's a University of Michigan uh, grad and uh, I'm going for it for Tampa Bay. And I hope Tampa wins it. I'm living in Florida right now, too. So that's a state that I'm in. So so I, I'm going for Tampa. It's going to be a tough one, but I, but I think they can pull it off. And Brady can um, uh, win his, I believe, seventh. Uh, uh, so it's, just, it's just unbelievable. I know. So yeah. Take, uh, Tampa Bay all the way. Okay. <laughs> I, I am agreeing with you because having watched both games, I'm thinking, well, you know, Kansas City's tough. They're they're tough. Their offense, Mahomes, is really a, a superstar right now. But I'd like to see the Bucks win, um, just because they need to. And they're playing at home. You know, home field, first time ever. You know, right. I I would like to see that too. So, are yeah. you a big football fan? What? Are you a football fan? Oh, huge! Yeah, pro pro ball. I don't know a lot about college ball. But um, pro ball, when, when I was growing up, the, the women would be in the one room talking and stuff. And I'd be with the, you know, in, I, and I remember in high school, because that was the 70s. So I was with the men in the living room watching Ali fight and watching the NFL games. And I just had a love of it. Could never do sports. I mean, I couldn't do them for the life of me. But I loved watching them. And now that I've grown um into like um you know well, an adult now that i'm grown up i love the strategy of the game you know it's it's such a strategic game and i'm also i'm working on a book for a longtime nfl scout i thought i knew about football but i didn't know about cover zero cover one cover two cover three cover four <laughs> uh, sam the mike and the will and <laughs> and all that's these i mean that's just man. It will forever change the way I watch the game. So yes, I love the game of football because it is so strategic. It's like a chess game with live pieces. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so how can people connect with you? Because after seeing your wonderful demeanor, you've always had such a, a kind, you know, welcoming demeanor about you. And how can people connect with you now that they've heard you talk? Yeah, they can connect with me um, on LinkedIn. Um, I, you can find me, Irish Children's on LinkedIn or um, on uh, Instagram, 
Um, I Childress 25, I Childress 25 on Instagram. Can you spell that? I C H I L D R E S S 25 on Instagram. I Childress 25. And then um, obviously they can connect with me on LinkedIn as well. So those are the two places they can they can reach me um, on social media. If they want to shoot me an email. Um, they can um, Ira or childress.ira at gmail, childress.ira at gmail. They want to shoot me an email. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. And they can get both of these books on Amazon. Yep. Okay. Everybody, you need to buy a book. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Well, so um, do you have anything, any last thoughts you want to share? No, no, I just want to say thank you for all the great work you do. And, and this is awesome. I, I enjoy being on, uh, on their show and I look forward to the books that you're going to put out here in the future. And and um, let's do it again sometime and, and let's keep uh, connecting on LinkedIn. I, I really enjoy that and, and, and really being able to help people with that. I mean, that's a platform that I really wasn't that familiar with. But once once I got on and I realized, man, this is this is really good. I mean, you can really there's there's some great things on LinkedIn. Oh, man, that's how I have built my business through LinkedIn. And I have, I think now, like 8000 connections. But at, at the beginning, I would print out knowing that I wanted to zero in on sports. I printed out a list of the NFL teams and the NBA teams because I knew those were both of my target markets. And I went A to Z on both. And I just went and connected with as many people on, on the Arizona Cardinals as I could. And I went down the list of all 32 teams. And then I did the same with the NBA. So um, was that effective? Yes. Apps, all my clients have come from LinkedIn. Yes. <laughs> and I'm pretty much connected with every team. So I tell people, whoever your target market is, it might not be those two entities, but zero in on them like an eagle, you know, on LinkedIn. And just, you know, it's not where you post your breakfast or where you post your kids. It's a serious networking site. But I have met, you know, wonderful people like yourself that we have never met. We would have never met in a million years. But, right. you know, now we're, we're talking and having a great conversation. So, yeah, LinkedIn has been my secret sauce. And yours, too. You work it, too. Yeah, yeah, I do a good job. Thank you. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate it. And let's stay in touch. And thank you. Thank you. And thank all the people out there. Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to let people know if you want to get in touch with Winning Proof, you can contact me. This will be on YouTube by tomorrow. And all of my Winning Proof Unscripted, you can find on YouTube under Winning Proof Unscripted. You can find me on my website at winningproof.com. You can email me at winningproof at gmail.com. And if you can't get through to me on those, then um, it's there's a problem. <laughs> so um, I'm also you know, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, Pinterest, all that. So uh, I thank you for watching another episode today of Winning Proof Unscripted. <laughs>